Hello everyone, it's Takuya here, and welcome back to a Hearts of Iron 4 video. My friends, I am angry. I recorded for quite literally four and a half hours yesterday here for Kaiser Redux, only to discover that my file was freaking corrupted for half the video that I recorded. So here I am, rebuilding the first part from scratch. It's A to Z, and I guess I'm doing uppercase and lowercase letters then, since we're doing the same goddamn thing again. And since we are here in A to Z, there are so many nations that we have yet to play, so many fun, awesome nations that are totally, totally not getting screwed over by anything. Well, okay, I say that there's a lot of nations over here that kind of get screwed by many different things. That's kind of the name of this mod, is getting screwed by everything around you and your internal politics. But Bolivia, oh, oh boy, you're, uh, you're screwed in way more ways than one. Yes, my friends, the story of Bolivia and Kaiser Redux, the world in which Germany won World War I, is not exactly exactly a clean one. It um it had a thing called the Chaco War, which was over this territory over here with uh, Paraguay, which it lost, allowing Paraguay to seize it from them. And simultaneously, they lost a war with Chile, losing their access to the coast. The story of Bolivia is one of continuously getting screwed over. And after the war, one of the military heroes of the war takes over the government. Germain Bush Becerra, who honestly kind of looks like an Abercrombie and Fitch model, to be honest. I mean, just look at this little curl that he's got going in his hair here. That jaw. This is sounding weird the further that I go. I Either way, every single thing about the focus tree that Bolivia has is based around the Chaka War, replenishing your lost territories and fixing everything. But everyone, speaking of recovering from your wounds, are you injured and don't know where to start? Well, with Morgan & Morgan, it is just that easy. For those who are not aware, Morgan & Morgan is a 21st century law firm that has modernized the injury law process, making it incredibly easy to submit a claim. You can submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents and medical records, all from your cell phone. And you can even text your attorney and legal team throughout the duration of your case. And because you are able to do this from your cell phone, with Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave your couch, which I have to say is a nice thing to be able to do in eight clicks or less, considering that you are probably injured and sitting there on the couch. And so, hey, if you are watching my video from a couch right now because you've been injured in an accident, then you can go and check out Morgan & Morgan. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. If not that, you can check out the link down in my description. Of course, you have the options of either centralizing or decentralizing your economy, depending upon what kind of path you want to go down to fix it in preparation for things for a Black Monday, or rather as a result of Black Monday so that you can fix it in the first place. And then there's even, I love this, there's a whole path for the Navy that you can get if, if you can get a coast. Very important. So first things first, here's what we're going to do. Since we can't do Black Monday, we're going to do Legacy of the Chaco. The Chaco War has been the largest event in our recent history. Not our proudest moment, to say the least. Our army is in complete disarray, and we are lacking everything a professional army needs. We need to change this. Yes, we are lacking everything. And with a severe economic depression and the Legacy of the Chaco War, we have horrible, horrible effects. Minus 50% division organization. That is atrocious. Not to mention, we have a horribly low population that we're not going to really be able to recover from here. We only have two research slots from the very beginning, so that means we're going to need to upgrade our guns from the basic ones that we have here, and simultaneously, we're going to need to start getting our industry going to be able to produce stuff. As for our civilian factories, well, we're going to throw all that. We actually produce a stupid amount of tungsten, so we're going to go ahead and slap that onto here, hopefully trade that away for some more factories. And after that, we are going to build some mills, because we severely need mills. As for our army, we start with six units, which is overall fairly decent, or no, five. We start with five. Okay, not the best. Not Definitely, definitely not the best. But at least we're not missing too much equipment, so we should be able to replenish that fairly easily, even if the division itself, oh my god, is absolutely atrocious. Well, either way, my friends, let's go ahead and move on. Ah, uh, yes, in the event that I love getting every single year because we lost to Paraguay in that one Chaco War. Yeah, you have to pay war reparations every single year, which even though you already have a weak economy, still means that Paraguay gets war reparations and massive bonuses. In fact, I cannot wait to actually play Paraguay because they start off in a significantly better position, it seems, than Bolivia does. And instead of completing things with Legacy of the Chaco War here, we are going to wait because as soon as we get over here to 10, there it goes, Black Monday hits. Perfect. Now, with Black Monday having hit and us being in an even worse economic situation than we already are, you know, you know, South America and that good old economic stability, you know, right? Right? Yeah, no, no one knows what it is that I'm talking about. Well, the suffering for Bolivia never ends. And as a result of that, we now get to choose what we are going to do economic wise, either centralize things with our mining operations and have increased government control or tax breaks. Now, both of these have pretty decent effects as a result, but in my personal opinion, I prefer going down the tax breaks path. The reason for that being is that these actually do not 
punish you by taking away political power and will give you some war support and other things, even if some of the aspects do hurt stability, because, you know, people people don't like it when you take your social services away. But the centralized option on the other side has multiple things, it seems, that take away your political power, which means you're not going to be able to spend that on getting the advisors and other stuff that you actually need to be able to do things within your country. So I would much rather take the lighter effects of tax breaks so that we can move on faster. Listen, when the people are suffering, you know exactly what to do. Don't tax the rich. After that, we can loosen regulations. It's going to require us to do this and then placate the oligarchs in order to make them happy. <laughs> and then after that, we can do longer hours and lower pay. Yes, I know how to fix economies, my friends. You just got to work harder and be paid less. Modern day parallels, everybody. Since we have 100 political power, we can get early mobilization, which is a good thing to have. And once we have another 100, we'll be able to upgrade that to partial mobilization here soon. The better that we can build up our very weak economy, the better. All right, there's the next thing of guns. We're going to go ahead and upgrade that perfect to the infantry level one. And then after that, we are going to need to go over here and we're going to need to start increasing construction, getting our economy moving as rapidly as possible, which is the, the rate of rate of a freaking snail here, to be honest. Ah, uh, yes. And of course, because Bolivia can't catch a freaking break, the tin prices, the one thing that we actually have in the country for like tungsten and everything, it collapses. Beautiful. Lake Tikitaka maneuvers created with the lavish opening ceremony. President German Bush Becerra has announced the creation of the Fuerza Naval Boliviana. Consisting of four patrol boats and over 1,500 members of the Bolivian land forces, our fleet is the pride of the nation. When we don't have a freaking name, we don't have a coast. We don't have a coast. It's literally something designed to go along the rivers. It's a testament of our lost territories on the Pacific coast. And while some have raised concerns, asking whether or not this is really the best use of our desperate, you know, like of our taxes, the majority of our military sees this as a great political statement, desperately needed in these trying times to raise morale, because that's totally what we could afford right now. Well, either way, we're going to get the option of striving for equal Equilibrium, tightening the belt. Uh, yeah, to be honest here, tightening the belt, I don't want to lose more stability. Strive for equilibrium seems like the most efficient thing in here that we could probably do. And then as soon as we have 100 more political power, we are going to go and get here to partial mobilization. Listen, I can't I can't just completely abandon all regulations, all right? That doesn't generally work with everything. I can just hear the angry libertarians in my comment section now. All right, here we go. Partial mobilization. I should already said that. All right, and with strive for equilibrium done, that means we can either diversify the economy, which is going to give me some civilian factories, or increased resource extraction, which focuses entirely on export. Now, the funny thing is, even though we did this whole thing for like, you know, the capitalist side, which is like aimed at exports and all those other things, we, um, th these are actually relatively weak effects besides the fact that this is going to give me a bunch of free guns. I would much rather be able to have a better, more stable industry. Like this is actually going to give me my own mill factories and simultaneously from this is going to allow me to get industry research bonuses. So we're going to diversify the economy and move away from just tin extraction. That seems to be the significantly better bet. And even though we have absolutely no population, I think it's about time we finally start uh, re recruiting some men here to get all this going. Yeah, yeah, we're kind of going to need that. Same time, move down here, get ourselves a research slot. Perfect. While universities do their best in order to provide us with the best professionals they can, Bolivia is a vast country with endless potential. And slowly, very slowly, but steadily, we have been for. And next up on here, university funding, which is going to give us a research slot. While our universities do their best in order to provide us with the best professionals they can, Bolivia is a vast country with endless potential. And slowly, but steadily, we have been forced to hire foreign professionals in order to fill the ad administrative. Mm. And the next up on here, university funding, which is going to give us a research slot. While universities do their best in order to provide us with the best professionals they can, Bolivia is a vast country with endless potential. And slowly, but steadily, we have been forced to hire foreign professionals in order to fill the administrative gaps. We need to increase our funding to our universities with the goal of replacing these foreigners for our local talent. Indeed, yes, like you, Jermaine, and your talent of looking pretty. The next 100 political power, time to move up here to limited conscription. We are not going to get nearly as many men on here, unfortunately, because of the legacy of the Chaka War effect, but at the very least, we can get some manpower in the field with more war reparations. Great. And after that, instead of times are changing to fix the economy, we're first going to get these military factories because it's more important that we actually develop a domestic arms industry to be able to utilize things. <laughs> Alaska breaking free here. Yeah, fun. Great. I didn't actually even see who got elected as president here. In the original game that I played, it was, and I've never seen this before, the uh, the constitutional American people, William H. Murray is actually the guy who took over. And again, I have never seen that happen. Strike in the tin mines as the tin profits remain in free fall and the nation descends into the greatest depression of its history. Miners from the Siglo XX and Katavi mines in Potosi province have reached their man or have approached their management demanding better conditions. And of course, refusal, refusal, and of course, refusal from the company means uh they're going on strike so uh we uh we we, we got we're gonna take decisive action and take them down 
Yeah. That's not how you do it in a capitalist society, my friends. Uh, yeah, I say that's not how we do that. And the immediate result is a massacre at the mines where 7,000 miners who participate in a strike and are marching end up getting shot and... 400 of them get killed oh my lord uh, uh i don't want to lose 10 stability i'll lose the 100 political power find the ones responsible damn it and now finally the times they are a changing oh my god wait i just i just realized that's a that's a that's a that's a song reference the times they are a change oh my god i didn't catch that the first time great more strikes also, it seems that the strikers didn't appreciate me shooting a whole bunch of them. So that's fun. Tin strikes diffused. Okay, well, at least that at least that works out. Okay, great, 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 great. Which means now I can focus on restructuring the army and then replacing our losses. Now we need to hardline focus into all the military aspects in order to be able to replenish and restructure our military for the coming conflict. Oh, and there it goes. The Chilean-Argentinian War. Okay, okay. Peru declares war on Ecuador. That is happening, my friends. It is all about to break out. So we're gonna take our military. We're gonna slap it down to Paraguay because a certain event is about to break out here. Spawn out these little cavalry here that I had recruited, slap those in the army, even though they're not fully equipped, it is perfectly fine. And the reason being for that is because here we have an opportunity to cancel the payments first off to Paraguay, and Paraguay is actually going to attack Argentina. So this is that thing that really sucks when you play as Argentina, if you remember that previous playthrough that we did. Argentina is now at war with the Patagonian worker state, it is at war with Chile, it is at war with Paraguay, everyone around them, it is bad. And you get an opportunity. Do we just attack Paraguay? Do we attack both Paraguay and also Chile? Or do we just not participate in the conflict. We can't not participate in the conflict because if you do that, then we're going to end up being screwed over because the powers here are going to take down Argentina and then we're next. But also taking on both Paraguay and Chile in the beginning is quite a bit of a risk. So what we're going to do is wait a couple days, move our troops into position, let Paraguay go down here and actually move their troops further away from their capital as they fight Argentina. And after waiting just a little bit of time and they move further away, now we go and attack Paraguay. Move over here. We need to make a beeline to the capital almost immediately. And I need to avoid getting in any fights at all because the only thing that we care about is the capital. So I'm going to lower this down to three speed, throw up the limited air force that we have in order to provide some coverage. Sign a non-aggression pact with Argentina. Absolutely. And I know that we're taking some losses down here, but it's perfectly fine. We just need to pin them in place so they will not be able to move. We cannot let Argentina move in. If Argentina moves in and they take the capital, that means that they're going to enter a white piece with Paraguay, and we can't do that. And the capital falls. Beautiful. With the fall of the capital, that means as soon as 24 hours is up, Paraguay capitulates to just us. We have the overwhelming majority of war score. We seize all of their equipment. It is beautiful. With that, we can go ahead and select basically everything in here. We take back our cores. We take this territory. And and we take everything. Beautiful. And with Bolivia now significantly larger, and we've gained some core uh, territory that is has like no population. It has, it has 19 oil, but it has 5,000 dudes, which is not going to help me militarily here very much. Like, I can't exactly do much with that. But I do get the fate of Paraguay, which allows me to choose what it is that I'm going to do. And in my case, I'm going to liberate a loyal Paraguay so that I don't have to garrison any of this stuff. It's significantly better for that to happen, and that means that we're going to be able to get some mill factories and other stuff from them here in the future. Now, the future of Bolivia. German Bush Becerra has ruled Bolivia for three years now, and his rule is illegitimate at best, as he had to coup the Daniel Salamanca in 1934 in order to become president. However, many in the country still support Bush, and his reforms have done nothing but improve Bolivian li livelihood. Livelihood, yes. We improved livelihood, even as we threw away the lives of many of these soldiers here by rushing them into Paraguay. But honestly, not really many of them died. We did great. He has shown his willingness to stay in his role as president permanently. Should we call for elections or rewrite our constitution for him to become president for life? Well, to be honest, from all this, long live el presidente, 30% bonus of paternal autocracy, which means that our government is super stable and happy, which means that's support, baby. Because nothing, my friends, is stable like a nice South American dictatorship. And since we're going to have cores on a lot of these territories over here, to be honest, what we're going to end up doing is we got our officer corps of proper heritage. This is going to be able to help us uh, actually get less supply penalties when we're fighting in this territory, which has very little supply in the first place, but also some bonus cavalry attack, which we're actually going to use a little bit of here. So since it makes it cheaper, I'm just going to make this unit actually somewhat viable just so it has a little bit more staying power here, you know. And then what we're going to basically do here is let Argentina just fight Chile. It, it's perfectly fine. We just let them go and do that here. It's going to weaken all the sides. And then eventually we're going to capitalize on that. And we're going to take things over ourselves. There we go. That is looking somewhat viable now. Okay. Now what we can do is start building a slightly better unit here. Something that's going to be pretty decent at actually being able to hold enemies in place. 
Ooh, Argentina in this playthrough is actually not doing so hot. They are they are getting strongly pushed back. But either way, it doesn't matter because by nationalizing the bank, that gives us a bunch of political power. With that political power, now we can go over here and we can start justifying a war goal on Chile. For by retaking a core state, it's only going to last 105 days. So if Argentina can just hold out for a little bit of time, we will be able to go and attack them. But it's okay because if Argentina can just hold out for a little bit, if they can hold out for a decent amount of time, we are currently justifying on Chile. And that's only going to take 105 days since we have a core territory over here so that means that we're going to be able to uh move down here and strike them while they're oh oh it looks like argentina actually managed to surround a couple units here hey that's actually something decent just need to hold out here then you know it's gonna be way more expensive we will still get the stuff here initially for superior firepower because we're going to need that in order to be able to do anything and with the justification complete and argentina in a significantly worse position here which is not how it looked in when i originally did this uh well they are further away so let's go ahead and declare war and strike no time like the present right all right quick 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 move in move in move in hold on out hold on out conscription laws extensive conscription as much manpower in the field as we can possibly possibly get because a boy am i running out but that's one division surrounded and we have pushed through on this side oh wait hold out hold out hold out, hold out. Come on. Actually, if I can hold these guys in here slightly longer, just enough to kind of pin them in place, I can move my troops further down in here. There we go. Call to arms. Get that population in here. I need it as fast as possible. There we go. Move in. Surround. Come on. Come on. Come on. Faster, fast, faster. Make our way down. Argentina is not doing so hot here. There we go. We may be grinding away a lot, but eventually we will break through. We will break through. Yes, I've done it. Okay. Keep up the attack. We just blocked them off. We just blocked them off. There we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Move in faster. Move in faster. If we take the capital, Santiago's about to fall. Yes. And with that, we do it. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Chile falls. Patagonia falls. We've done it. And now, even though we knocked Chile out of the war, the really unfortunate thing that ends up happening here is that everything is just way too expensive to take. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's some kind of event. It's like you have to choose to actually attack uh, uh, Chile in the beginning, but you can't really risk doing that from the beginning because if you do, then what appears to happen is that you just get overwhelmed and screwed. Like, it's just, it's, it's unfortunate, but that appears to be what happens. So, yeah, no one can take anything from any of this. Um, I just, just confirm and that's over. And then, wow, okay, that peace deal completely screwed me. Our Argentina now cancels their non-aggression pact. They get Chile as a puppet and I don't get anything even though I justified on them because this mod and this area seems to focus exclusively on like Argentina. Fun. Great. Great. Well, here's the thing, my friends. This isn't what happened in my original playthrough and I'm just going to go ahead and explain it right now before we jump ahead a few years in time. Here's how it is that this whole thing played out in the actual history. I had actually fairly come close to taking over all of Chile when all of a sudden a peace deal broke out, some kind of scripted event it seems, that causes the government government of Chile to collapse. When this happens, it actually gave me all of my coast here so that I controlled all of this territory, but simultaneously, I then got an event to return this territory of Tacna to Peru, which I promptly did. After that, there really wasn't anything for me to do. So even though Chile and Argentina at that point had a non-aggression pact and nothing really happened with it, I was then able to go after a year or so and justify on Chile and attack them and turn them into my puppet, which sounds awesome, right? I wish that I could really show that here if my game wasn't freaking corrupted but now the events have screwed me over here that set up the world and then ultimately what ended up happening is that argentina turned around and betrayed me they launched some kind of focus or something that they have which forcibly made chile which was my puppet into their puppet and then they turned around and attacked me after forming an alliance with peru which in turn forced me to withdraw all of my troops from the front line into defensive positions in order to be able to hold years and years of slogging through and fixing stuff for the focus trees and that's what happened so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the real history of how this playthrough went down. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. We had to withdraw. We we had to actually withdraw. And they went and attacked Chile. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, it wasn't that a... When the fuck did Chile become a pup? Wait, hold on. They were my puppet. Oh, these bitches. Yeah, we, we are destroying our Navy. We are getting our manpower back. I don't even care anymore. Okay, I'm going to need that shit. Why does everyone goddamn hate Bolivia? I just got my coast back and it's gone. Uh, no, we're still steadily losing ground. Okay, come on. Hold out. Hold out, people. Is there anything that I can do? This is getting desperate. Wait, wait. Army reform. Ooh, ooh, wait. There's something for defense on core territory. Yes, yes, we're taking that. <laughs> oh my God, this hurts. This hurts so badly. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I think I think things have stabilized. All right, how many losses are we currently at here? 55,000. Oh my God. Oh, oh my Lord. Um, You know what? You know what? 
you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Just just let them throw them at us. Let them throw themselves at me. Actually, wait. I realized. Can I try something? I might be able to try something. No, oh, no, no, no. That is not working. That does not work. Okay. Avoid. Avoid. Never mind, my friends. Holy shit. They really are throwing themselves at me. Okay. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. Okay. That was a close call. That was a close call, but we took it. Okay, we should get back. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this at all. All right, things are still getting dicey. Time to start building some forts. We, we got to get some of the stuff prepared. <laughs> oh, 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 they're just, they really are just throwing themselves at me here. Okay, okay, let's see. How many tanks? Okay, we have enough. We have enough for one. And okay, okay, come on, come on, come on. Desperate, desperate, last little ditches. Keep on defending. Come on. Oh my God, at this point, I've killed like 600,000. Okay, every man in my country is dying, but I don't freaking care. And you know why I don't care? Because at this point, we've been able to hold out for the entire time and started to develop armor. Is it good armor? No. No, it's uh, it's it's really not. It's really not. But it's going to do the damn job of holding the line. Because the only thing I need to make sure to do is be able to have enough of these that I can have at least two tank divisions at any given time, perfect, to allow me to push. Because I think at this point, I've wrapped them up here in a little bit of a trap. All I got to do is launch a strike here, launch a strike here, and see if we can move across. If we can hold out since they won't be able to pierce through, that means I should be able to break through and destroy them. And as soon as we manage to succeed in doing that, that means they should be able to move over here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just a little bit. There it is. Okay. Destroy and move back. Quick, fast, back, 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 back. And perfect. We managed to hold. Okay. Okay. We held. Wonderful. And then they start pushing troops back into the gap again. There we go. Perfect. Another one wiped. Let's go ahead and get that one. In 1943, we are we're still holding out here. There's not really anything that I can do. I can't get any international help whatsoever here. Okay, not good. Not good. We lost one of the key spots. Okay, definitely, definitely not good. And I am out of manpower again. There we go. Another one trapped. Okay, go, 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 go. Wipe out more. Perfect. And retreat back. The more we can weaken their numbers, the better, because they are... So, oh, God, they are flooding into here, aren't they? The end of the American Civil War. Would you please... <laughs> Daddy, please. Daddy, daddy, please. Would you save me? Oh, <laughs> we took it back. We took it back. Okay, okay. That just gave us a huge amount of manpower with this. Perfect. Wait, Argentina is called Peru into the Uruguay. You're going after Uruguay. No. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Not my capital. Come on. This is a very careful balancing game that we're having to play. I know, I know that this gameplay is absolutely riveting right now. Trust me. I'm so glad that I got to play Bolivia in here. Wait, did that say the Argentinian-Brazilian War? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Please, please do go and attack Brazil. I would love for you to attack Brazil. Oh my God. <laughs> I held. I held. Oh my God. Wait, how many troops did they have? Oh my God. Their industry is massive. Oh, this is just too perfect. This is just too perfect. Yes. Oh, you Peruvians. Oh, 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 oh you, you bit off a little bit more than you can chew, I think. All right, all right. As they fill in the gaps, just keep on punishing them. That's all that we're going to try and do. Yes, more wiped. Die, die, you Argentinian bastards. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, we wiped out the good force. We wiped it out. I think, I think that was the northern border. Yes, Paraguay is back. Brazil, Brazil, you beautiful bastard. You're doing it. Yes. There we go. Just send our troops in, force our way through. The more of their troops that we can surround and kill, I'm going to let Brazil do a lot of the pushing, and I'm going to do the surrounding and killing. The more of these that we can knock out of their army, the better, because that means the less troops they'll actually have. This has got to be one of the most boring and simultaneously exhilarating games I have ever played in my life. Yes, big surround. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wipe them. Bolivia is coming back from the brink of death. Death, baby. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yes, 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 yes. There's more. I think that at this point, we have completely broken the AI. They can't do anything. We're just wiping them out piece by piece as we move up. Okay, let's see. Uh, Brazil is basically holding things in the south. Okay, you know what? You know what? We have been divided for basically too long. Let's go ahead and take out Peru, and then from there, we can focus south. Okay. Guys, I got caught staying up late again in order to finish a video. It didn't work. It it, 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 it it did not work. There we go. Don't let them move away. Keep on moving up. Oh, come on, Brazil, please. I, can't, I had to split my attention again here for you. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. Take the capital. Oh, my God. You left the border. No. <laughs> Why do I have to do everything? No, screw it. I got to go for a push. I got to go for it. I got to go for it. Yes. Yes. Okay. I did it. I got Peru. I got Peru. Oh, my God. Quick. Move in. Finish them off. Do whatever we can. 
end this farce. Yes. Yes, the last of the North is taken. We've done it. We've done it, my friends. And look at this juicy industry. I actually have the ability to do things. Yes. Oh, God. I was I was in a pretty bad deficit there for a while. I'm not going to lie. That was, uh, that, that was not looking good. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. How? Oh, my God. I... Oh, that was, oh, I can't even speak. Guys, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't even speak right now. That was, oh. so listen, Brazil, I'm sorry. I'm, I am sorry, but listen, a significantly higher percentage of my people's population died in that conflict than yours. And I think I deserve this. Yoink. Once again, all of the South, the true Chaco war is complete. Bolivia reigns supreme. Even though, you know, we haven't actually been able, we, we haven't had like a focus tree to do here in like, forever there's, there's nothing for us to do it's just been a continuous death war against the south now as for our options what do we do well the fate of peru i was going to release these i genuinely was but also how about no no you you will never betray me again you're actually you're great you're fine we'll release you you didn't hurt anybody, little Uruguay. The rest of you fuckers, though, no. You've lost your right to exist. Honestly, at this point, I could go after more things, but I am... Honestly, at this point, I think I could go after more things, but I think that I am done. I think I have showed off Bolivia quite a bit in the world of Kaiser Redux. What even happened with the rest of the... Oh. Um. Huh. Japan is still at war with the world. Nothing has happened there. Russia, you, um... Y y you got destroyed and are now forced into your alliance because you're, uh... A p wait. It, Russia is a republic of the Ukrainian state. What? <laughs> what? You heard it here, folks. Russia is a puppet of Ukraine. The world is fixed. This is the good ending. And Ukraine has also invaded India. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. They're at war with Canada. <laughs> Canada also owns Mexico. Um, why do you look so smug about this? Germany, I realize, also owns Portugal as well as Ireland. And then England is independent here. No, it's that uh, England is also a puppet of, of uh, Germany. Great. Austria appears to be death warring against the Italian Federation, as I'm guessing this conflict has gone on for quite a while. And, uh... Australia is dying to Germany. Great. Everyone, this has been Sakui with another Hearts of Iron 4 video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know down in the comment section below what it is that we should be doing next. Uh, obviously, I was I will be continuing with the Kaiser Redux playthrough, uh, but then simultaneously, if there are other types of mods or other things that you want to see, let me know, because I have some plans here for things like TNO and others. But also, I realized something with Luxembourg that I'm going to be doing next. Oh, have I caught your interest? Well, you'll have to find out, because I did just realize something. Anyway, you all have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much for watching, and good Bye, my friends.